Hi folks, thanks for joining us on this video. If you're new here, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. We're a musician and artist and at the end of last year we moved to a nearly 200 year old cottage on the Isle of Skye in the Scottish Highlands with our dog, Jack Spaniels. This week we go overboard in Loch Harport as we roll up our sleeves, helping to scrape years of barnacle growth off the community tugboat. And I get our own boat safely tucked in for its long hibernation over the cold and wild winter months. Plus we go to a part of the island that we haven't yet explored for a special art exhibition opening. Join, Join us, us as we, we continue. continue. Live in the sky life. Hello. Yo, yo. Papa, papa, I wonder if it caught something. We're down at Carbos Waterfront. We're here today to help them because they've got a tugboat that's covered in barnacles. Now, I don't know if you remember if you watched the previous episodes, but I actually had my boat on this pontoon for about a week and a half at one point, I think. And they were very kind and let us do that. So we're going to pay that back by going to help them take these barnacles off this boat. Looking forward to it? Oh, lots. <laughs> Nothing I'd rather do on a lovely, sunny, calm Saturday when it's been howling a gale for the past week. Yeah, true. <laughs> Carbos Warfront is a charity and we did make a contribution towards them as well. If you want to do so, we'll leave a link in the video description below. But for now, let's go out and help them get these barnacles off this boat, eh? Yeah! <laughs> So we made our way from the pontoon to the pier, where the other volunteers were gathering around the tugboat. You can see down there there's lots of barnacles on the side and that's what we're cleaning off. But we have to wait a bit because we can't get in there too much water. But that said, I reckon I could put my waders on and go on that rock there. So that's what I'm going to do. Right, let's waders on and get down those rocks. Put my waders on. Not for fun fishing reasons this time for barnacle removal, which I'm sure will be fun as well, in its own special way. Wadered up, ready to rock. Very fetching. I'm a spade and everything. Now which one do you want? I think they're pretty equal in weight. You want the lighter one, but... Mm -hmm. I'll have the blue one. Let's get the barnacles off. There were several other volunteers eager to get stuck in, however I was the only one in chest waders, which meant I could get started before the tide went out. Also, we decided not to bring Jack Spaniels, as we didn't think it was a safe environment for him, so I wanted to get as much done in as short a time as possible to get back home for Jack. By the time it's out of the water, you guys have had all this side done. <laughs> Look at this. String of muscles. Yeah. Is it time for some of us who don't have waders to do some work? Why not? <laughs> well, welcome. I've got some water now, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> We've just been watching him because none of us have any waders. What have you found? I don't know. I don't want to know. Let's put it in this <laughs> rock pool. Hopefully, it'll be alright. I was on the side of the boat just there. <laughs> Why does this seem like a really bad idea? Just spotted this on the other side of the boat. I won't say what that looks like, but I'll let you use your imagination. That was fun, wasn't it? Yep, I mean, probably more fun for me because I just did a lot of watching. I was actually half expecting you to bring me a coffee or something. Oh, well, we might have to stop there on the way home. Yeah, good idea. I brought my waders because Richard said I might have to get to the prop and it's going to still be in the water, so bring waders and you can get in there and scrape it off and whatnot. What we didn't realise is it was 
a rope wrapped around it. So we had to free that, which was a bit of a nightmare. That took pretty much as long as the rest of the stuff that we did. Anyway, it was really enjoyable and they were very appreciative of us doing that. And uh, as I said before, Carbos Waterfront is a charity. If you wanted to, you can contribute towards them and we'll leave that link in the video description. But I loved that. That was great fun. I loved doing stuff for that. It's just really satisfying. It really satisfying. And especially the guys going along with the pressure washer, just taking off all the grime, the dirt, and looked very satisfying. And all the sea life that was on there, it all just went straight back in the water anyway. So it's back in the marine environment. Yes, there probably were some casualties, but the majority, I saw it myself, are okay. They're just down amongst the rocks and they'll reattach themselves to rocks, which is what they're meant to be attached in the first place, not boats. Right, that's us then. Let's go back to the house. Mm -hmm. Let's go. stopped at Caradu coffee shop to get salt and caramel hot chocolates first of the season because it is now very much autumn but unfortunately for someone chocolate doesn't taste the same anymore no you know what it's so annoying of all the tastes to lose from your repertoire of flavors chocolate is probably one of the worst ones to lose eh? that's because of covid yeah never came back after covid everything else i can taste and weirdly i can taste those lindor chocolates you know the little sweetie ones but apart from that every other kind of chocolate like that i used to absolutely love these hot chocolates because they're amazing mm. but i can't taste them anymore it just tastes like hot tastes the same to me i'll just have to drink yours i drank it anyway oh well hopefully it'll come back hope so fingers crossed i prefer chocolate to hot <laughs> Sausage roll tastes good though. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out in the shed and the reason I'm out in the shed is because I've got some stuff to do to the boat. I brought the boat in and since then it's just been absolutely wild. I mean pouring with rain, proper storms, very high winds, pretty scary really. But uh, we're kind of used to it now I suppose. Anyway the first thing I'm going to do is run the engines in fresh water. The engines are cooled by water so I don't want all that salt water sitting in them for the whole winter. I'm going to use the fresh water in the burn and I'm going to use the barrel if you remember it. The blue barrel which I doctored. I cut the top off it for exactly this purpose this is why i wanted it so i'm going to use that barrel from barrel of laughs in a previous episode yeah let's do this let's run the fresh water through the engines so here's the blue barrel in place as you can see i cut the top off it it's designed specifically for this purpose so let's fill it up with water from the burn okay that's the barrel filled Let's try the engine and run it for a bit if I can get it started. She's been out of the water for a few days and it's been horrible rain. It's been really cold, really windy. I think it may be a challenge to get her started, but we'll see. Moment of truth. Well, that was a pleasant surprise. I'll just leave her now to run just for a few minutes. I just want to see that everyone's okay and I want to run the fresh water through the system as well. Let's go. So, a bit smoky because she's cold, but that's the result. So engine number one is behaving. Is engine number two going to behave? This one has only been started, I think, twice in the whole season. So I'm hoping it's going to be all right. My feeling is it's going to take quite a few pulls to get it started. So I can see there's probably going to be some sped up footage here. I hope I'm wrong. Fingers crossed. Here goes. said this hasn't been used for a long time months in fact I haven't had to use it so which is a good thing I have to say The next job is to take this engine off, the small engine, and put it away. It's going in the shed for the whole of the winter, so I'll do that now.
There we go. Looks like a good spot for her. Now it's time to stow away the engine and I'll put the cover on it later but for now I just want it out of the way so I'm going to lift it back and it's quite heavy. I've got a bit of a technique for this though. This ratchet strap doesn't help me. There we go. Normally I crouch right down but this ratchet strap's in the way I should have taken it off. Never mind. It's done now. Now it's time to take out the two bungs. There's one on the deck that goes underneath the bilge pump and there's one at the back of the boat to let any water out of the hull. They could have gathered there. Let's hope there's none, but we'll see. Let's just check it out. So I'm hoping that very little or no water comes out when I take this bung out. Which isn't easy because I put it in really hard. There we go. Fresh water coming from the sky. If it was salt water, I'd be more worried. So there's some water getting in, but it's actually not that bad. I'd estimate that at about 10 litres. What I should have done is put a bucket underneath and see how much was in the bucket. But certainly not more than a bucket of water. So for that amount of water to get in the whole time it's been on that mooring, which is weeks and weeks, I'm not really worried at all. It's like a bucket of water or so. I'm going to leave that open for the season now so it can drain if any water does get in because the bilge pump is getting taken out and that step is next. This is probably a flattering look for me. This is the bilge pump, this is coming out, and the little plug, which is actually a cork. I've just taken that out as well. So that'll drain away now. And any water that gets in this boat now will go out there and then out through the other one in the hull. And there will be water getting in as well because it's going to be winter, it's going to be pouring with rain and snow, and the cover will do its best, but it's not going to keep everything out. So anything that gets in will just go straight out again. Now onto the batteries. This is the battery for starting the boat. So I'm going to take that out. It's not good to leave it over the winter in freezing conditions. So I'm going to put that in the house somewhere. I haven't told Sarah yet, but that's coming out. And so is the battery in the back, which is the one for the automatic bilge pump. I'll take them out and I'll get them ready for charging at the start of next season. There we are, that's the ignition battery there at the top and the bilge pump battery out ready to be charged for the start of next season another job done right so that's the boat ready for winter i hope i might put some more ratchet straps on it over the cover just to protect it in case there's really high winds but i'll probably do that later i'll need to dig them out and see if i've got ones long enough for a start aside from that i'm pretty happy i've emptied the hull the batteries are out the bungs are out everything's pretty much cool for the winter so uh that's the season over on to the next one and finally, with the engine cover on and secured in place with bungee cords, that was the boat ready for the winter. Me and Jack Spaniels are just out for a walk in the woods at the moment. It's Friday. It's not quite five o'clock yet, but instead of cracking open a few beers in Skylife Studios, we are going out. Shock horror! <laughs> A friend of my parents who lives up in Scotland, she actually lives in Loch Carron, which is about an hour away from the Sky Bridge, I think. After she retired, her and her partner moved to the Highlands and she started painting and she has an art exhibition opening tonight on the Isle of Skye. It's a gallery that I've heard about, but I've never been to. It's in Isle Ornse, which is down on the Sleet Peninsula. So we're going to go down there. I think it's really important to go and support people at these things. So it'll be really nice to go. I've known her since I was a little kid. So yeah, it'll be really nice to see her work and the other people that are on there. We did think that maybe Jack wouldn't be able to come in with us, but they've said that's fine. So Jack Spaniels is coming to the gallery with us. I thought I'd better take him out on a nice long woodland walk just to make sure he's nice and tired out so he's on his best behavior. And then we're going to head back, get changed, and we're going to head out to this gallery. Get in the car, please. I know you like it better in the woods, but we've got places to be. No. You get in the car. In the car. Jack. I know you can do it. In the car, please. Come on. We've got a party to go to. It's just like going to the pub. Do you want to go to the pub? Come on, in the car. Come on, in the car. In the car. Good boy. That's better. Good boy.
The gallery hosts exhibitions of local artists, especially those whose work celebrates Scottish landscapes and wildlife. This exhibition runs until the 25th of October, and after that, there is only one more exhibition before it closes for the season next month. It will reopen for the new season in springtime. This is the artist, Aileen, Aileen Grant. Hello. Hello. So this is the artwork, so could you tell us a little bit about it? Okay, well this is acrylic, mostly acrylic, but with charcoal. I've, drawn, I've used charcoal to draw the outline, put a little bit of charcoal on the other bits, charcoal marks here, and then I've gone over it with acrylic. A limited colour, so not too many colours. The view is based on Loch Torrin, and there's a lovely walk that you can do from the road uh, near the Torridon Inn, and you walk up through the woodland and then you suddenly pop out through the woodland and you get this amazing view back down over the lawn. And that's Ben Alligan. Yeah. And this is the forest. So it's, I was quite loose, you know, I didn't get too, uh, I'm not painting the trees, it's just marks. And there's always this turquoise colour which is under the surface of the lawn. So that was what inspired me to do the painting. I did a sketch when I was there from the top of the path and then I did this painting soon afterwards. Amazing. I've not been here before, it's really nice, really, really pretty. Reminds me of a place called Barakro on the west coast of the islands. It's a similar sort of vibe. I've brought Jack out because uh, I thought he might need to go for a whittle, and he did. So he's now almost pulling me over. He's on the side of the camera that you are. And he's sort of gone behind my back, so I'm just going to spin round now. There he is, little munchkin. Oh, this is really, really pretty here. I really like it. And it's raining, but it's, it's very calm, which is nice because it's not been recently. But yeah, what a place. Hey, Jack. Jacko! It was such a fun evening and we loved getting out of the Glen to support this group of local artists. We ended up having a lengthy discussion about which piece of art you would have in your house if money was no object, and I honestly couldn't decide. Let us know in the comments what you would choose. We've put links for all three artists, Aileen, Stephen and Cindy, in the video description below, as well as the gallery website. This is my favourite because I think it's just outside the window. I've just been out there with Jack and uh, yeah, it's nice to see something illustrated that you've just seen in real life. I like the colours. That deep blue is really nice. I like everything. There's nothing in here I don't like, to be honest. Are you trying to get outside, folks? Yeah, doesn't appreciate good art. Well, that was great fun doing that with the tugboat. It was really cool to see it getting all cleaned up like that. And I really wanted to shout out Carbos Waterfront as well, especially with it being a charity. And as a result, they're sending to our house one of their directors who's going to be coming over this evening. I'm looking forward to meeting them, but a director of a charity? I'm a little bit nervous about this. I wonder what it'll be like. Oh, <coughs> that must be one of the Carbos Waterfront directors. This is exciting. 
Oh, all right. Hello. Hey, man. Or, what are you saying? We're waiting for one of the directors of Carbost Waterfront to get here. Me. Huh? Me. You? Yeah. Come on, you drove him, didn't you? No, I didn't. I'm the director. <laughs> yes, yeah, we're just that. joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on with this. We've got an interview to do. We've got to try and be sensible. So as I said a second ago, we were just messing around. I obviously knew it was Richard that was coming round. But we just thought that would be a bit of a laugh. Anyway, question number one, Richard. What are the current goals of Carbost Waterfront? Well, our current goals are just to improve the facilities for the likes of yourself and any local that wants to use it and tourists that want to use it, you know, you can go down there and have picnics and fish off the pontoon. Next question. Who runs Carbost Waterfront? Carbost Waterfront is run by a committee of five directors. We usually have seven, but three of them stood down at the last AGM because they've been doing it for now over 16 years, like, you know. Wow, it's a long shift there. Ah, try and get um, younger generation in to get younger opinions. Yeah, get younger happens. people running the place. Yeah. yeah. Next question is, what happens to the funds that are generated by Carbost Waterfront? All the funds that we uh, generate, the fares, the money that the locals pay per year visiting yachts, cruise liners that come in, the rent money we get from could do coffee, all of that money all goes back into the waterfront, be it in maintenance, be it in allowing us to buy the tug without having to get so much grant money. Everything goes back in. Nobody takes a wage out of it. It's just an entirely voluntary set up as a charity. Like, you know, we just do everything voluntary, you know, as and when you can. That's great. So is everyone just mucking in? Yeah. Trying to do something yeah. positive yeah. in the community? Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. We're not aiming to make it a commercial thing. It's just purely so that the locals have moorings and are allowed to use their boats. And then obviously the people that are coming in, in the bigger boats, <laughs> and the liners and things like that that's all adding revenue back in the paddle steamer the waverly she's on about putting it onto her itinerary and maybe that might come into Carver's waterfront you know and do tours from there you know pick up tours from there so. that'd be amazing to see there as yeah, well yeah. In the, in the glen, it would be beautiful. So, you know, it's, it's all potential, like, you know. Next question. What made you want to be a director of Carbost Waterfront? I was um, nominated by several of the directors and several of the members because I've been with Carbost Pier Limited now as a member since 2012. My father, who was a member of Carbost Waterfront since 2007 when it started, and was never a director. And as an honour of the work that my father and myself had put in, they deemed that I should be a director. A thank you for my dad's work yeah. as a memory of him. Like, yeah. yeah, no, that's great. And it's a younger generation as well. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. Not that I'm that young, you know. <laughs> You're not that old. Wow. You're only a couple years old. I'm older than you, though. <laughs> Two years. What's <laughs> that? <laughs> What are your visions for the future of the charity? The visions for the future is just to improve it and, you know, get more facilities for the yachts, the visiting yachts, and get more cruise liners coming in, yeah. if possible. We're going to apply for a grant to be able to employ somebody so that they can be a harbour master. Payment for visiting yachts is done on an honesty box system. So, you know, there are one or two yachts out there that do a bunk without paying. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's a charity, that's Yeah, terrible. well, this is it, you know, that's the day and age we live in. You know? Well, if you're watching out there, go back and put some money in the honesty box. If, <laughs> you're, the, if you're the yeah, guilty yeah, party. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure that none of our viewers are, though. And any questions or any problems, where to get water and where the nearest bins are, or where the toilets are, things like that. It saves the directors keeping visual on the place all the time. Okay, is there anything else you would like to add to this? Do you feel you've covered everything? You know, any of your viewers that visit the visit the island and find themselves at Carver's Waterfront, we would much appreciate it if you do take pictures of the waterfront and you're on Facebook and that. Go on our page, uh, it's Carver's Waterfront public page and uh, send a request to be added to the page and we want to get as many pictures of the waterfront so that the public can see what goes on and that also has the links for the website, the payment methods for you know if you're moving or if you just want to feel 
feel generous and want to donate some money to Carvis Waterfront Charity, you know. It all helps at the end of the day. It sure does. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed yeah, it, as so always. And, it's uh, probably the most talking I've done on one of your videos since we started filming in here. <laughs> I think it's probably the most talking you've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's something I'm passionate about, you know. No, fair enough, man. I really appreciate you doing that, and I'm mm -hmm. sure everyone out there has enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. And I was just to explain a bit what we were doing with the spades, scraping yeah, barnacles yeah, yeah. off a boat. This is why. It's a good thing that the Carbos Warfront are doing. We're trying to do something great for the community and make it accessible for people and put the money back into the community as well. Thank you very much for coming round, Director of Carbos Waterfront. Yeah, and for all you guys out there, I don't shake it, it just stays like that. Yeah, and I don't do it at all because it's his. <laughs> and I'm not a surfer. <laughs> <laughs> As always folks, thank you so much for watching our video, we really hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please leave us a like, a comment or subscribe to our channel if you don't already. It's free to do and it really helps us out. Sure does. If you did enjoy this video, you could always buy us a coffee over on Kofi or a wee treat for Jack Spaniels. Or just contribute towards the running costs and making these videos. Or if you want to help us out more long term, you can become one of our amazing patrons over on Patreon where you get lots of extra content for helping us out every month. I'm also very excited this week because my calendars and Christmas cards came back from the printer and I'm so excited to get them all sent out to you. So we've been busy beavering away, getting those packaged up and they'll be heading out very soon for all the pre-orders. And I will release some on general sale pretty soon once I'm on top of all those orders. Thanks again for watching our video and we will see you do, 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 next week. That was terrible. <laughs> It's going in. It's going in. It's, it's going in. Oh dear. We're leaving our suburban life, moving over the sea to sky. Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see when we're living the sky life. Living the sky life. If you did enjoy <coughs> frog if you did enjoy this video um, oh. if you did enjoy this video you can <sighs> why am i doing it wrong why did i do this while i'm walking uphill that's a bad idea opening in that scene is loud this week i got all my print all my, all my printers because all my calendars Calendars. Calendars. And if you get them, then, then you Filming you, filming me. <laughs> <laughs> don't follow them. Oh, we've got to, got to make stuff for the blooper reel. Oh, don't worry, I'll do that down there, no doubt, on those rocks. We're going to pour tree soon. Possible. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing, Mr. Scott? Well, he's trying to scrape barnacles off the side of a boat. I brought the waders because Richard said I'd probably need to get up by the prop and uh, help. It's not rocking, right? This boat isn't moving, right? <laughs> no, it looks fairly solid to me. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is run the engines in soft water. No? Keeping an eye on, you know, anti-social behaviour, just making sure everything's safe. And, and have you had some of that? Have you had a bit of anti-social behaviour? Yes, before? we have, yeah, yeah. Right. Do you want to talk about that or not? You know, it's, it's there, it's being dealt with in other ways. That sounds like the Mafia, man. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? The community council are doing it. Was they doing it at night in a black Land Rover with the torches? <laughs> Green one, actually. <laughs> Click here to subscribe to Live in the Sky Life. Click here to go back to the start of our adventures with our very first episode.